Hi, I'm Alina Stella. I'm a level one chef. My name is Lorenzo. I'm a level two chef. My name is Frank. I'm level three. The last time I made spaghetti and meatballs was last Christmas. The last time I made spaghetti and meatballs was actually Thursday because Thursday is my pasta night. This is the recipe that we normally make for Sunday dinner. I would consider myself an expert. First, I'm gonna start with the meatballs since they take a little bit longer. Just place that into the bowl. Pound of meat. Beef for meatballs is completely fine, but meat, I like to add a little bit more flavor, and why not add pork sausage? When I make meatballs, I like to use three different types of meat. Beef, pork, and veal. Right in front of me, I have a grinder set up. It'll grind it up, it'll mechanically tenderize it. Let me start with a Spanish onion. onion. I'll saute this in a pan. I'm gonna add some garlic. garlic. If you ever see a little green stuff, take that out. You will have heartburn and indigestion. We are not browning these vegetables. We're sweating them to get the natural sugars out and the moisture out of it. Half a cup of breadcrumbs. breadcrumbs. I'm gonna combine this with panko and Italian breadcrumbs. Quart a cup of milk to keep the meatballs moist. Sometimes people will add milk to this. I don't really like milk in my meatballs. I'm gonna add four eggs. One egg, it helps keep everything together. And I'm just gonna ninja one egg into the bowl and Parmesan grated cheese. I use Pecorino Romano just for the fact that it's really salty and sharp. A little bit of basil. You must add salt. Salt, salt brings out the flavor of everything. Pepper. pepper. If you can fresh grind the pepper, it's even better. And then what you do now is you get in there with your hands. Oh, this feels really strange. My hands are clean, I promise. <laughs> and that's it, that's my mix. Now we scoop. Roll them into two inch size balls. Yeah, I think that's a good size. Boom, boom, boom. Karate chop, karate chop. I always get a little ninja in there. Bigger than the golf ball size. Boom, boom, kaboom. I like to use an ice cream scoop. This not only makes things more uniform, it's actually much, much quicker. My sauce comes from a jar. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get started with my sauce, which is basically an easy peasy marinara sauce. What we're gonna do is start with the other half of the Spanish onion. Just dice it up. Again, I like garlic. And then I'm actually gonna add sweetness to the sauce by using the good old carrot because we're using whole peeled tomatoes. There's always this canned taste to it. So in order to get rid of that, you add sugar. The secret to my sauce is that everything's in one pot. We brown the meatballs in the pot. Our oil is flavored with the meatball juices, basically. Canned tomatoes, which we're using, tend to be a little acidic. So when you put onions in there or you put basil in there, a little bit of orange, it makes the sauce a little sweeter. Don't need a ton of garlic. I put a bay leaf in, but with the orange rind and my basil, I like to tie it together with some butcher's twine. In the kitchen, we call this a sachet or a bouquet garni. And to get that Italiano feel to it, <laughs> we're gonna add some Parmesan rind to it. I like to use canned, peeled, crushed tomatoes, no skin. I also like to use a little tomato paste. Tomato paste adds a little texture to your sauce, makes your sauce a little thicker. So now we add the tomato sauce. Make sure you cover all of them. I also like to add seasoning at this point. A little bit of black pepper and salt. You gotta be careful with the salt because if you put too much now, the sauce is gonna cook down and it's gonna be a little too salty. And I'm gonna add basil and oregano. That's something that my mom does every time she makes meatballs and she puts it right in the sauce. I really like basil, so I don't mind adding a little bit more. The juices from the meatballs will just accentuate the taste of this sauce. And the longer you cook it, the more thicker the sauce will be. All right, meatballs, swim. This not only flavors your sauce, it also helps to keep the meatballs tender. And then I'm gonna let this cook for about 40 minutes to 60 minutes. Now we're gonna do the spaghetti. My spaghetti is pretty simple. I get it straight from the box. I have fresh pasta today, Bucatini pasta. Why not get it as close to restaurant quality as you can? Box pasta is really great for every day, but if you really love people, you make fresh pasta. Today we're gonna make a small batch. Most people would say it's really difficult, but it's not hard at all. Nice spaghetti. Once I take them out of the box, I crack them in half. Okay, <laughs> just so that they fit in the pan a little bit easier. Here we go. One nest of pasta, two nest of pasta, and you immediately stir pasta in the water, or else clumpville. 
And now that it's boiling, we're gonna put the pasta in. I add salt and olive oil, just cause that's what I've been told to do. I don't exactly know what it does, but I'm gonna say it adds flavor. You never add oil to your boiling pasta. Somebody had said that somewhere and people believe that. <laughs> it's wrong. The sauce will just slip and slide away. It's important to salt your water, not only to season the pasta, but the salt actually brings the temperature of the water up quicker. A dry pasta would take about 10 minutes to cook, but a fresh pasta only takes two to three minutes. And that's it, that's our spaghetti. That looks good. <laughs> I think this looks pretty good. I can see the browning on this meatball and I'm really excited about that. The cheese looks awesome. This is spaghetti and meatballs my way. Beautiful homemade pasta, nice torn basil leaves, gives a little sweetness, delicious. I'm going for it. Mmm. 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 Just delicious. Mmm. It's really I think good. my grandma would be proud. <laughs> delicioso. Wow. Spaghetti and meatballs is a delicious and traditional dish. It shows how starches and proteins come together in pasta, in meatballs, as well as sauce. Let's cover the pasta first. Box pastas are really delicious and they work really well for certain applications. There we go. Typically they don't have egg added to them. They're just based on a wheat-based flour and water. And so you get this nice dried pasta that has a real toothy quality to it. It has an al dente quality, so you get a bite to that pasta. Mm, yeah, they're perfect. You won't get that with fresh supple pastas that you either buy fresh in the store or pastas that you make yourself by the addition of eggs to a wheat-based flour. When you add your pasta to boiling salted water, just like Frank said, your water should be sea salty. Some chefs recommend that your water be just about as saline as the ocean. You wanna add your salt to the already boiling water, otherwise it just takes too much time to heat the water up. Also, as Lorenzo said, we don't wanna add olive oil to the pasta water. No bueno. <laughs> Mostly because once you take the pasta and finish it in the sauce, the oil is gonna prevent it from adhering to the sauce very well. The sauce will just slip and slide away. When you're making meatballs, typically you're gonna be adding some sort of a starch like a bread or breadcrumbs. You're also gonna add eggs. Breadcrumbs are gonna act as a nice tenderizer. They're gonna give a soft quality to your meatball. And the eggs are gonna act as an emulsifier. It's gonna hold together the bread and the meat and all of the other components into one delicious kind of emulsified meatball. Egg yolks contain something called phospholipids. Phospholipids have one part of the molecule that loves water, so it's hydrophilic, and one part that is hydrophobic. It doesn't like water. So your phospholipids act as a bridge between the water-soluble and the water-insoluble parts, so you have really nice structure in your meatball. It's fantastic. You enhance the flavor greatly by browning your meatballs first. That comes about because of something called the Maillard reaction. You also get a really nice sensory experience because the browning imparts a lot of flavor, but it also looks much nicer. If you don't brown your meatballs first, they're not gonna go through that Maillard reaction because you have too much water present, which inhibits Maillard browning. So you're gonna get a gray looking meatball that's not very appealing from a sensory perspective. Ooh, a nice meatball hoagie. Oh, God, please help me. Alina used jar sauce. My sauce comes from a jar. You might find ingredients in these sauces that you don't want to have in your pasta dish. Things like high fructose corn syrup, occasionally some sort of added starches. And these things help to thicken and give sweetness to the sauce, but it's not a real authentic tomato tasting sauce. Try to make it look nice. When you're making your own homemade tomato sauce, you want to layer flavors. As Frank did, he started with garlic and onions in oil. And that's really important because many of the flavoring compounds are dissolved in the oil, so you start off with a really nice baseline of flavor, and then you add the tomatoes to it. When you are using fresh tomatoes. They are whole peeled tomatoes. The temperature at which you cook your sauce can make a real difference. If you use a slow, moderate heat, there are some compounds in the tomato called hemicellulose and pectin that give the tomato its soft, juicy flavor, but also some structure to the tomato. If you used a canned tomato, typically they are autoclaved at a very high temperature, and the enzymes that promote this fresh quality to your sauce are deactivated just because of the high heat. 
To remedy that canned type of taste, you might want to balance out the sweetness, but you don't need to add sucrose. You don't need to add white sugar to your sauce. You can add some natural sweetness in the form of, say, a carrot, like Lorenzo did. Carrot. Frank, on the other hand, used an orange, and this adds some complex flavors, and it adds a really nice sweet quality to the tomatoes that Frank used. I think it gives a really nice background flavor. When you're choosing a cheese to use with your spaghetti and meatballs, you have a lot of options. Traditionally, Parmesan is used. Parmesan cheese is one of my favorite cheeses. This is a really nice, complex, but slightly mild and nutty kind of flavor that goes with your spaghetti and meatballs. In Frank's case, he used a Pecorino Romano, which is also delicious from a different region in Italy, but it's got more of a peppery bite to it. It's a lot of flavor in a smaller amount. Parmesan, you need a lot more to get that really nice cheese flavor. So you might want to use a Pecorino Romano with a sweeter type of tomato sauce than with a more mild type of tomato sauce in which case you might want to use the Parmesan. Spaghetti and meatballs may seem like a really standard dish, but there's a lot of changes you can make, whether it be the type of pasta you choose from commercial pasta to homemade pasta, jarred sauce or homemade sauce, as well as grinding your own meat to make meatballs. Always be aware of the ingredients you use, where they come from, and keep in mind the delicious result that you're searching for. And that's it, you guys. <laughs>